Hello everyone and welcome to the Synology Partner Online Training. We have a great topic for everyone here today going over ransomware protection with Synology immutability. This is a very significant topic for anyone storing sensitive data upon their Synology devices. Quick introduction, my name is Cody. I'm a product manager here at Synology and I'll be your guide for this one this time around. To begin, let's start off with our agenda today. We're gonna to start off taking a look at ransomware so that we can understand this threat so we can then counter it with the technologies available on the Synology devices. We're then gonna take a look at the actual technologies you're gonna to utilize to counter these aside from good security best practices you're gonna also want to follow. We're gonna take a look at write once, read many folders and also immutable snapshots. So we're gonna move into section one, taking a look at ransomware. Now in this section, we're gonna first define what ransomware is, take a look at some common attack vectors so that we can counter those, and also take a look at ransomware trends so we can understand what we're actually facing. On the topic of ransomware, ransomware is a type of malware that encrypts your systems and data until a sum of money has been paid. And there's no guarantee that you'll gain access to your data again, even after you pay the ransom. The criminals in this case could just take the money and run. And there's several different attack vectors that they'll attempt to utilize to gain access to your system. One of the most common are phishing attempts. And we're probably all familiar with this, some sort of strange email talking about some sort of billing issue or an invoice you don't recognize. Some other common social engineering attempts they'll try on your users is baiting them or using some sort of scareware. Other common attack vectors include actually using critical vulnerabilities that are known to these actors on unpacked systems, which is why it's so critical to actually patch your systems when these different security patches do come out. You need to stay up to date. On top of that, they'll attempt to use compromised credentials to gain access to your systems. Let's say you don't have 2FA enabled and your admin credentials are compromised for one of your admin users then they now have full access to the entire system, which is why it's so important to use things like two-factor authentication and strong password rules, regardless of the platform you're utilizing. Now, ransomware in the world is on the rise with CISA stating that it affects nearly every vertical. Doesn't matter how large or small or new your business is. On top of that, ransomware is having uh, more and more of an effect on all these businesses. It's happening more and more often. Verizon data breach reports state that these ransomware attacks are included in 25% of all breaches on corporate networks. On top of that, the true costs of these breaches are reaching into the millions. Even though the ransoms themselves may not cost very much, the downtime of these businesses costs upwards into the millions of dollars and affects people inside of the business and out of it as well. Now that we understand what we're up against, let's talk about what Synology softwares can counter this ransomware threat and how to set those up in your environment. So we're gonna move into section two on worm storage and how this can counter this ransomware threat. So in this section, we're gonna talk about what write once, read many storage is, how it's implemented on a Synology NAS, and the different types of write once, read many storage you can utilize on the system. We're also gonna show you how to set this up for your environment. So what is worm storage? In this case, worm stands for write once, read many. Just as it sounds, you could have a set of data land on your storage device, the Synology NAS in this case, and have it stay there unmodified forever, depending on your settings. And then it can be read from many times thereafter. This helps counter ransomware because by its very nature, ransomware is changing your data, it's encrypting it, and a write once folder won't allow you to do that. Now, some common forms of worm storage that you might be familiar with are a CD or a DVD, for example. You would burn these different devices in and then read from them many times, listening to music or watching movies. Now there's plenty of other more advanced examples of worm storage out there, like the Synology implementation we're gonna see today. Now in terms of worm on Synology NAS, it's actually enabled at the shared folder. You create a new shared folder and enable this functionality. So each folder you create can have its own different policy. You can set a grace period so that there's a period of time before the file is locked or you can go for immediate locking. So any data that lands in the folder will then be locked accordingly. You can also define an immutable period, which essentially means that the file will remain locked for a period of time and then after that point, it can be removed if you need it to, or you can keep it permanent. Now, let's go ahead and check out some of the different options that you have for your write once folders. So on a Synology NAS that's capable of this write once read many technology, you're gonna be able to select what kind of mode the folder is in. Now on the enterprise mode, it is ideal for archiving and securing data, providing administrators with the flexibility to delete the write once folders if they need to. 
Now, compliance mode is a bit more restrictive and it's designed to meet regulatory requirements. Under compliance mode, even the highest level system administrators cannot modify or delete files in the protected write ones folders. So if you're in compliance mode and your policies allow it in your organization, it may be good to actually utilize the grace period just in case you accidentally put files inside of a compliance mode write ones folder. This would help guard against any mistakes of your users. It also might be a good idea to use a quota for those folders as even the administrators cannot delete data out of those different folders that are compliance mode and write once. So here we are on our Synology NAS and we're gonna move through the process of creating our write once read many folders. Now, just like any other shared folder, this is gonna be a similar process. We're just gonna to go to control panel, click shared folder and hit the create button at the top. Now, we're gonna name the shared folder, of course. And on the next screen, we're gonna be able to enable the write once read many technology. There's a couple other options here, but we wanna protect this data that's gonna be in this folder from ransomware. So we're gonna use the write once option at the very bottom. And if you need more information on this feature, you can click the learn more button to get to our knowledge base on this topic. Now on this next screen, we're gonna be able to set the mode for the write once read many folder. You have enterprise mode, which means that data can be deleted by admins, or you have compliance mode, which means it can't be deleted by anyone, including admins. So we're gonna lock down this folder as much as possible and use compliance mode. Just below that, you have the enable auto lock feature. The auto lock timer is essentially going to be your grace period for data landing in this folder. So you can set that to be hours or days if you need to. But for us, we want any and all data that lands in this folder to be locked immediately and protected by this technology. So we're gonna use that option in our case. Now, just below that, you have the retention option. So you can set the period of immutability for the data inside of this folder for days or years if you need to. But we wanna keep this data forever, so we're gonna use the remain locked forever option because we're gonna lock down this folder as much as possible. Lastly, you're gonna be able to set your lock state for this specific folder. Now you have two different options essentially. Append means that you can actually add data to the end of the files, et cetera, inside of the folder. Now immutable means it can't be changed by anyone or even deleted. So we're gonna use the immutable option and with these settings, this is gonna be as locked down as you can make the folder. Any and all data that lands in the folder will be locked, retained forever, and it will be immutable. So if you use these settings that makes the folder extremely locked down, I highly recommend setting up a shared folder quota so you can easily control the size of this folder. Because if you leave no quota on this folder and completely fill your NAS, you're not gonna be able to remove the data. So I highly recommend using a quota. Now we're gonna move through the rest of this wizard and it's gonna look very familiar at this point in time. We're gonna say that we actually acknowledge this warning here that we can't delete data inside of this folder now with these settings. And we're gonna be able to set our permissions, et cetera, for this folder on the next menu. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and open up FileStation and begin adding data into this folder and it'll be locked immediately. So we're gonna open up FileStation now. And we're gonna go ahead and upload a bunch of files into this folder here. So now we have a bunch of files inside of this folder. And if we blow up this screen here, you're gonna be able to see that the lock state says it is immutable on the right hand side. If we right click as an admin here, we can see that the delete option is completely grayed out. We can't even delete the folder as admins or the file as admins. Now what we're gonna do is show you the other side of things and actually go in and interact with this data over SMB, for example. But first, let's try and delete the shared folder as an admin, and we're gonna see that we actually have a warning here that we can't even delete the shared folder as an admin on the NAS. Now, moving on into the actual SMB side of things, we're gonna open up this folder inside of Windows File Explorer and dive into the Worm Compliance folder here. Now, since this is a write once read many folder, of course, we can still open up a photo here and begin interacting with this data and actually reading this data. As you see here, we have this photo open. But as an admin here inside of this folder through SMB, for example, I can't delete this file here. So I'm gonna use the delete option here. We're gonna click yes, of course, and we're gonna get a permissions error saying that even though I'm an admin, I can't actually delete this file. Now, just because immutable storage with this worm technology is a strong counter to ransomware, this does not negate the need of following security best practices, especially having two-factor authentication for your admins so their credentials are even harder to compromise. Synology also provides a list of best practices for hardening the Synology NAS that you'll wanna follow and you can find that on our knowledge base. On top of that, 
you definitely still need to have robust 3-2-1 backup strategies in case anything else goes wrong so you can recover in the event of a disaster like ransomware. And one layer that you can accomplish this on a Synology NAS is with snapshot replication. On that note, let's move into section three on immutable snapshots. In this section, we're gonna to touch on snapshot replication and get acquainted with it, just in case anyone watching is not familiar with this package that Synology offers on the NAS device. We're then gonna talk about immutable snapshots themselves on a Synology NAS and some different ways that you can enable it on your system. So snapshot replication is an application you can download on your Synology NAS, and it provides BTRFS snapshots of data that resides in your shared folders or thin provision LUNs. These snapshots are actually read-only copies of your data residing in those locations, and they can be actually replicated off-site and even support failover at that secondary location. So should something happen to your primary site due to a natural disaster, then you can fail over that data to the secondary site and continue working from there. Now, snapshots also provide incremental versions each time a snapshot is taken and replicated. So whenever you replicate that data across, after that initial replication, it's going to be just sending that changed data over. Now, this immutable feature is an extension of snapshot replication, that package we just talked about. It uses worm technology similar to the write once read many shared folder feature and they cannot be deleted within the immutable period. So as long as those snapshots are locked, they cannot be deleted for any reason by anyone. You can set this immutable period to be up to 30 days and other snapshot features that you know about are also supported like rotation, retention, etc. after that immutable period has expired. So there are several ways you can enable immutable snapshots once you're on the latest update. You can enable this for existing snapshots taken before you actually update it. So you're actually able to go into your snapshot list and enable this immutable feature and lock those snapshots down for a specific period of time, up to 30 days. You can also enable this for your local snapshots in case you're not replicating anywhere else. And of course, if you are replicating your snapshots elsewhere, you can enable this immutable feature for those as well. Let's check it out. So here we are on our main Synology NAS and we're gonna go ahead and set up immutable snapshots. Before we do that, I want everyone to know that we've actually gone over the snapshot replication package in previous webinars on disaster recovery. So if you haven't seen those, go ahead and check those out if you need additional details. We're gonna be mainly focusing on immutable snapshots today. So we're gonna open that snapshot replication package and begin following through with some wizards. Before we go into the replication task, I want everyone to know that you can go to the regular snapshots tab and actually create local immutable snapshots too if you need to. We're now gonna move down to the replication tab and begin following through this wizard. On the first screen, we're gonna tell snapshot replication where we actually want to send this data. I'm gonna use this drop down box here and it's going to scan our local network for other NAS we can send this data to. You can also replicate over an external IP address or FQDN or even a VPN for example. So once we're all authenticated with this secondary NAS, we're then going to choose where we want these snapshots to live. We're just gonna choose volume one in our case. Now next, we're actually going to choose what folders we wanna replicate across. We're gonna choose the worm compliance folder just to show you what that behavior looks like. Now on this next screen, we're gonna choose our actual schedule for the snapshots. We can have this run daily or up to every five minutes if you need to. You can also configure a snapshot window and block off periods of time when you don't want the snapshots to run. But the biggest setting here for today's webinar is actually the immutable snapshots checkbox. We recommend actually setting your immutable snapshots to be immutable for a period of seven to 14 days, although you can set this to 30 days if you need to for your internal company policies. Now on the next screen, we're gonna choose how many snapshots we wanna retain. We're gonna retain a specific amount of snapshots, only two, just to show you what this behavior looks like. There's also a couple other options here for actually setting a period of time that you wanna retain these snapshots for and also advanced retention policies. But we are going to make sure that we only retain a small amount in our case, again, just to show you what the behavior looks like. Now, once we've allowed these snapshots to run for a period of time, you can see we have several different versions, but we're going to also show you that you can set up a manual sync if you need to. If you need to run a snapshot at any point in time, you can do so here and actually make those snapshots immutable too. So now that we have several different versions, we can actually go ahead and try to browse and restore from these snapshots. Now, once we have this open, you'll notice that I can't restore and overwrite this folder to a previous version, to a previous snapshot, because it is a worm compliance folder. But I can easily clone this snapshot into another shared folder or pull data out using the browse option. Now that we have immutable snapshots enabled and a worm compliance folder, 
we have a strong counter against ransomware. So we went over quite a bit today. Let's go ahead and recap and go over some next steps. We started off by looking at ransomware so we could understand this threat and address it accordingly. Now, one of the ways we're going to counter ransomware is by using immutable storage with write once read many technology to help guard our sensitive data. You can also use immutable snapshots to further guard your data against ransomware. Now, if you need help pass with this webinar provided, go ahead and check out our Synology Partner Online training page. We have hours and hours of video content there. Also, go ahead and check out our Synology Knowledge Base. We have step-by-step -step guides on a range of topics we covered today, including security best practices to harden your NAS. On top of that, if you have any other questions, go ahead and send us an inquiry, and our highly trained inquiry team will get your questions answered. And if you're a business user with your own internal IT team, go ahead and reach out to onboarding at SynologyAmerica.com and we'll get your questions answered. Of course, if you're a reseller or a partner, go ahead and reach out to sac underscore sales at synology.com and we'll get you connected with your technical account manager. And lastly, if you have UK offices or UK clients, go ahead and reach out to uk underscore sales at synology.com and we'll get you taken care of there too. With that said, thank you so much for tuning in and learning how you can guard yourself against ransomware and we'll see you next time.